Hello and welcome to Infinity. I did a little while ago some saturation masks and then I did a system using a procedural texture to create that as a macro. And, and this is the, if you go to the Infinity here, go to the videos here and then search for procedural texture saturation mask you'll come to these here. Um, this is just gives you, if you want to go through those, about how the macro was selected and or created. Then if you to download it, look at the link below to download the macro set. Set up the library by going to Window and Library here. Then go to the hamburger up here and import macros and import the macro set. Or you can actually just drag it onto the image there and you'll get this Dave saturation masks here. If you open that you'll get the basic saturation mask that we did in the videos and then some others using algorithms that I developed for the Dave saturation selection up here. So just go to the saturation mask basic one that we did before. What this does is shows what we do. We just do three simple controls here for selecting more of a saturation or not. And there's an additional one here where you can invert it. So you select what you didn't select. And if you go to a preview, then you get it all in black and white, which allows you to see more clearly what you've got, or even produce a black and white layer from that with a layer and merge visible. And then this allows you, as in the videos, to change what is selected and this can change that amount there. You can shift the histogram up and down to select different parts. Okay, let's delete that. Notice by the way that was a single layer and all of these create a single layer. And let's go to the simplest one of these, which is the smart and simple one. This uses a more complex algorithm, so I didn't show that in the videos because it's a bit too much to cover but it basically converts to HSL using international algorithms and all that stuff. Now imagine you've got saturation going from zero down here, so which is to no saturation, to fully saturated the top here. And then we create a wide band. So if I go down to here, then I've got the monochromes, I've got a width of that band, so I reduce the width as well. Then you can see here, I've now got a way of selecting just monochromes. I can bring this up to, if I bring it to the other end, then I've got the more saturated areas. I can drag out the width here to select more and getting th more things which are saturated. And with the feathering, this is quite a significant element. I'm just going to zoom into here and bring the feathering right down to zero. And there, what you can see, you get a very pixelated edge. So the feathering softens that. So if you're doing an adjustment, it's not going to look so bad. OK, Control zero back out again. What you can do as well is if you want to remove some of these other things, then you can add an extra mask. If I put a mask here, because this is a an adjustment, it'll try and mask that. So I'm going to drag it off to somewhere else. Just drag it up above there. And now then I can get rid of other things here because it's a mask on top of effectively a mask by going to the black here. So I go to a paintbrush first and then make sure it's black. Then make a brush of a suitable size and always check the opacity, flow and hardness. That'll do. And then we can paint away the bits that we don't want to affect as well. So that bit there is being painted in the mask and the rest of it is being selected by this. But now we can apply these to a uh, adjustment. So just show the limitations of this as well, by the way, is if I go here and uh, do a, um, where is it? A recolor, that's the one I wanted. So I'm gonna put that up there and say this now has turned, turned this to red, but I still can't see the ones below. So what I can do is drag these onto here. 
So what I can do with the recolor here, I can change the color of this to whatever I want. And then to use these, I'm going to drag these on. So I'll drag them up onto the icon there for the first one, and then drag the second one up onto the icon. And what we've got here is, is the, this bit here is green as well. So I actually want the mask to be above this. So I can drag this up on top of that there. So now I've just got this area selected in green. And the effect that I wanted to show is, is just so you can notice this, because I would normally use a hue selection to select this rather than select by saturation. But just to show this effect, you see this is only selected the saturated areas and the bits around the edge aren't so saturated. I could play around with this one here, or I can go to this layer here and I can paint on this. So can I can get to a paintbrush and go to get a black brush here. And then I make this a bit smaller. Smaller, there we go. Notice by the way that it, it, it kind of catches up slowly and I can paint down these areas here. And see, I, this is actually, because I'm painting black onto an adjustment, it says don't do the things in this. And I can always paint white to tidy up the edges as well. So in other words, you've got a fair amount of control on this to be able to adjust both this and add an extra mask to provide this adjustment. But this is selecting by colour uh, here. This, uh, you know, this is a, a recolour, so normal I'd use it as something else. But by and large, when you want to select by saturation, this is a very simple way of doing it. So let's just delete that, get back to normal. And just look at what some of the others do. They're very, very simple, the others. First, the top three as well. So that one was the smart and simple one. So smart adds a little bit more control. So what we've got in here now, drag this open a bit here. We've got that same middle width and feathering. So I can turn, go to the more saturated, bring this down and bring up the feathering and so on. But note here, it's not selected the same things before. And that's because I've got four different ways of doing the calculation. So I can literally go from naught to one and so on. By the way, don't put hover over here and use the mouse wheel because that doesn't work. Um, and it's a bug. I think they've recognized this. So there, see, that's closer to what I got before. I can go to two, which gives white bias, and to three, which gives a black bias. But by and large, naught or one, one of these is going to give you something that is suitable. So you can, so you've got more controls here. Yeah, the feathering here as well, you've got the algorithm by which feathering is done. So if I um, look at where I'm going to take the width here, turn that up, and go down to the edge on this, and I'll take a narrow width. So we can look at the feathering algorithm on this. So if I change the, the feathering on this, so if I go to say so naught, so it's normal, naught is linear, one is an exponential curve, you can see it changed a bit, and two is a cosine curve. So you can see some differences in here. So if the feathering's not what you want, you've got a control here, you can do it. And there again, we, with, as with all of them, you can invert it or put it on zero to see a black and white preview. So, um, and again with this, you can drag this straight into an adjustment. Let's try a quick different one here. So I'm just going to go to, let's do Vibrance here, drag this into this so that I've got a, it's adjusting it. So I'll go out there so I can see the whole thing. And now I can say desaturate you know, a bit and it's just taking down the saturation of that select area selected by saturating. So I can say, I just want to desaturate this oversaturated bit here and I can select it and do it quite easily. And I could add an extra mask to paint out other things as well. So, so for the full one, I just got more controls again. And this here, what this adds is instead of the middle and the width and the, um, uh, and the feathering, I got effectively, imagine there's four points along from desaturated to saturated. So this is the bottom. The gap here is the feathering here. This is the main selected area. And then the gap here is the other feathering at the top end. So you can actually have different feathering at the top and the bottom. 
And then you've got these other controls here, the same as before, the calculation and so on. On the download page, by the way, there is a full description of all these controls for each of these. And lastly, there's a monochrome mask, which is just to help you sort out monochrome simply. If you want to take, take up the monochrome, there's a coarse and a fine control and you can feather it. Uh, and you can invert it as well. So I can say, let's select everything but the monochrome. So that gives you a kind of a monochrome select because monochrome is basically low saturation. Anyway, that's it. I uh, hope you enjoy those, play with those, and you've got five different mask macros to play with to give you saturation masking, which is something that at the moment is not available in Affinity Photo version 2. That's it, and thank you very much for watching.